Welcome to Andrew Womack Recorded Live, a weekly podcast featuring Andrew's latest live teaching sessions, along with his other classic teachings through the years. And now, here's Andrew. Praise God. Well, welcome to all of our online uh, people that are joining us. Man, this is a different um, healing is here. Actually, healing is there. Healing is wherever you are. Jesus is with you and Jesus is the healer. So we are excited about our 2020 Healing is Here conference. And, and we believe that God is going to be touching you right where you are. It's awesome. We've got, of course, our guest uh, people that were healed. And we this is going to be a different conference in the sense that instead of us just teaching on the healing, we're going to be doing a lot of having people demonstrate it. You know, it says in uh, Revelation chapter 12 that they overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And testimonies are powerful. The word of God is the seed, but you also, what you experience is very, very important. And so we are going to have some great, great things happen. I think it's really, really going to be good. Uh, Daniel, could I ask you to come up here? Daniel Amstutz and Carly Teredes are the ones that have been running our Healing is Here conference for how many years now? I think this is our sixth year. Wow. We started in 2014. And typically, I'm just a guest speaker. I speak once or something like this, and this year it's a little bit different. It is a little different. Carly uh, just felt like she was supposed to be doing something else this year, and so she's not with us. This is actually kind of her baby. Yeah. She's the one that came up with the idea. And Carly and Daniel uh, get up here and teach, and, and we have a great time. And Daniel's going to be teaching, but we are going to be dealing primarily with... Uh, testimonies and things like that. But and you know what's exciting about this? This is our 20th anniversary of our very first healing journey. Oh, yeah. And we're going to get to hear from that very first That's person awesome. this morning. That's awesome. That's exciting. And it's 20 years of healing journeys. Yeah. That's great. And, you know, we've been seeing people heal for many decades more than that, but that's when we started our healing journeys. It yeah. was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, how is this different for you? Are you, uh, you're just ministering at what, once or twice? Yeah, I'm teaching one time. Yep. One time. For, for about an hour or so, and then I'm also leading worship in the evening sessions. But you know what's exciting about this? Healing is all about Jesus. And he's the healer. We've never healed anybody. Amen. Jesus is the one who does what he does through us as we make ourselves available. So these stories, Andrew, that are, as Stephen Bransford says, you've got a story and it's better than you think. As you were just saying, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 But also the word of our testimony. So I believe these stories and our teachings together and just our fellowship together is going to make such an impact because right now, People are so hungry to know about health and about healing with this pandemic that's in the world, so-called pandemic. You know, I'm telling you. I think they did classify this as a pandemic because not enough people were affected. It's not a pandemic anymore. So I just had a, who was that? Tony Perkins, I think, told me that. Really? Well, you know what? Let's get contagious with healing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thanks, brother. Amen. Love you. Man, this is going to be a great time. Let me mention that we have people at our phones right now. Wherever you are, you can call 719-635-1111. And we've got people answering our phones and they will pray with you. So, you know, we've got a few people that came here to the conference. Uh, Most of them are our guest speakers, but we had a few people that were already coming and so we allowed them in. But just very few because of the restrictions that they've got. But you can call at 719-635-1111 and somebody will pray with you and help you any way we can. And we believe that there's going to be a lot of miracles happening. Also, we are going to be giving away some prize packs for people. And what you've got to do is you've got to take a selfie at home. That doesn't even sound godly, does it? But you take a selfie and you put with it hashtag healing is here and then you mention Karis Bible College and you send that in to us and we're going to be giving away three packets and the first one will be given away Wednesday evening. So if you would just take a moment and do that, it would really encourage us also to let us know 
who's watching and who is a part of this, and it'll be good. We also are going to be having, I think, I, I, I hadn't counted exactly, but it's somewhere around 12 or 15 of the people that we have healing journeys on are going to be giving their testimony during this. And so we've packaged together, I think there's seven healing journeys all together, and we've packaged them together. And normally that's, I think, $125 for uh, those seven videos, and we are making them available for 99 So if you would, again, call that number, 719-635-1111, uh, and tell them that you would like to receive that. That would be a blessing, and we would love to do that with you. And we also want to give you an opportunity to give. Are they going to put up the information? I'm not real up on how to give on, on, online, but uh, hopefully they'll put something on the screen. Help? <laughs> Anyway, or you can go to awmi.net uh, slash donate and you can uh, give there. And that would also be another way for you to be able to give. But we believe that God is going to touch you wherever you are. I know we've got people watching from overseas, from all around the world. And you know, as uh, Tessa said, the lady that was leading our praise and worship, there is no such thing as distance in the Spirit. God is going to touch you. And one of the things that we have emphasized, and I mean we have really tried to make a point out of this, is that there's different ways to receive healing. And there is no bad way to receive healing. So it's not like I'm saying one is superior to the other. But there's one that is more available to everybody than the other. And that is just the Word of God coming alive on the inside of you. It says in Psalms 107.20 that He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destructions. So the Word of God is health. Proverbs chapter 4, I believe it's around verse 20 or 22, says the Word is health unto all of your flesh and life unto those that find it. And so one of the ways that any person can receive healing from God is just through the Word of God. And you know, sad to say, a lot of the healing that has gone on in the body of Christ has been built around people who have a healing anointing on their life. And praise God for those people. Man, we need that. Again, there is no bad way to receive healing. But not everybody is going to be uh, is going to have access to somebody with a healing anointing. Like the people that have those anointings typically have large crusades and they will have hundreds or thousands of people there. And, uh, you know, there's just a very few people that get healed. I used to actually usher in uh, Catherine Kuhlman's meetings when she came to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And there was two or three times that I did that. And we would have somewhere around 5,000 people at the thing, and there would be maybe 20 that would get healed. And praise God for the 20 that got healed. But how many people left sick? And I'm not putting that down at all. We need that. Matter of fact, we're going to be having Nikki Oshinsky give her testimony here in just a little bit. And she was believing God, but she just needed a little point of contact. And I came and prayed with her, and God used that. And praise God, I was... It's, it's thrilling. But most of the testimonies that you're going to be seeing this week, nobody prayed for them as such. It was just the truth of the Word of God that set them free. And the reason I'm saying all of this is to say that you may not be here with us today. And again, people have been taught that the only way to receive is to take somebody who's got an anointing on their life and let them lay hands on you and pray for you, and then you're going to receive it by impartation. It can come that way, but it also can come just through the Word. And that's what I want to share with you today. If you look over here in uh, Matthew chapter 8, there's an instance where Jesus was amazed at a person's faith. In Matthew chapter 8 and in verse... Five. It says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion besieging him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. A palsy was some type of paralysis. Could have been something like a stroke or something like that. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. 
Then centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. You know, before I get into the rest of this, let me just point out something that used to bother me. There was This man was a centurion. That means he wasn't a Jew. He wasn't a covenant person with the Lord. And if you contrast this with the Syrophoenician woman that came, and she said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus just ignored her. And she kept crying after him over and over, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And finally his disciples came and said, Lord, send her away. She's troubling people. You know what the difference was? He finally turned to her and he says that it is not, it is not meat or proper to take the children's bread and to give it unto dogs. What a derogatory statement. And yet this woman humbled herself and she says, yes, that's true, but even dogs get to eat of the crumbs that fall from the table. And he said, because of that, go your way and your daughter is healed. And the demon was cast out. You know what the difference is right here? This man was a Gentile also. But he didn't approach Jesus on the basis of the covenant because he was outside of the covenant. This woman was saying, Jesus, thou son of David. She had no right to the covenant. So what this would mean for us today is that if a person approaches God and saying, Oh God, I've been fasting and praying and studying the Word and I'm living as holy as I can and I've done all of these things, would you heal me now? You are trying to approach God on the basis of some merit or worth that you have and you are going to get a bad response. If God actually gave you what you deserved, you'd go to hell. (laughs) <laughs> Some people think, oh no, not me. Well, you may be better than I am or better than somebody else, but all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We can't receive healing on the basis of any goodness on our own. This man approached Jesus and he just asked him if he would come. Just playing on the mercy of God. And when Jesus said, I'm going to come, he says, I'm not even worthy that you should come under my roof. You know, over in 1 Peter chapter 5, James chapter 4, both of them say that God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. I tell you, if you want to see the grace of God, which is what every one of us needs, you need to humble yourself. And you need to quit approaching God, saying that, God, you healed this person, how come you haven't healed me? And you compare yourself and do things. And you need to just throw yourself on the mercy of God. So this is what this centurion did. He came and he says, I'm not even worthy for you to become, come under my roof. But he says, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. And said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. You know, this is significant. There's only twice in Scripture that Jesus marveled. Once is right here at this man's great faith, and another time he marveled at his disciples' unbelief. He was amazed that people who had spent three years with him, day and night, seen all the miracles, heard the greatest messages that have ever been preached, that they could be so hard-hearted and full of unbelief. He marveled at how much unbelief his disciples had, and here he marveled at this man's faith. Any type of faith that makes Jesus marvel is worth analyzing, looking at, and figuring out what made this man's faith so great. He says, I've never found... uh, So great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and with Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he said to the centurion, Go your way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. And so he was saying, this is the greatest faith I've ever seen, and this man's faith. He says, there are going to be people come from the east and the west and every place. All of these Gentiles are going to press into the kingdom. And yet some of the chosen people of God, the Jews, would be cast out. 
Because it's all based on faith. It's not based on your performance. It's not based on a covenant of uh, natural covenant about physical things like whether you've been baptized correctly or not. I was just in a meeting with Governor Huckabee and uh, a bunch of senators and all of these people and they were discussing things like why Christians can't unite and get together and vote and do things. And I pointed out that I said, man, they just can't agree on anything. Some people think you got to sprinkle. Others, you got to dunk. And I told them, I said, I just believe in holding the people under until they really repent. Amen. That's... <laughs> But we just argue over the slightest little things. It's just amazing. And anyway, there are people that are coming based on all of these natural things. The thing that God is looking for is faith. And I want you to know right there in your home, wherever you are, however you're watching this, you know, if you reach out and by faith, if you do what this centurion did, God will do the exact same thing for you. You know, we hold meetings and people come by the thousands. And we now, I used to do all of the praying for people myself. Now I have our students and prayer ministers travel with me and they lay hands on people. And we have people come and we lay hands on them and we see lots of people here. You know, Daniel was just up here and we have a healing school every uh, Thursday. And we've been doing this for how many years, Daniel? A decade. A decade. Man, doesn't, time goes fast. But he has trained thousands, probably four or five thousand or more. More of uh, people have gone through an intense study and they go out and they lay hands on people. And we believe in that. We believe in laying on of hands. But I also believe this, that you can just send the Word and the Word can heal them. I can guarantee you some of you are watching this and you're thinking, oh, I'm so disappointed that I wasn't able to come to this Healing is Here conference. And believe me, I'm disappointed too. This is not what I want. It, to me, there's just something wrong with canceling a healing conference because of sickness. <laughs> it just doesn't compute. And uh, anyway, I'm not going to get off and talk about that, but I did this under duress. It is not my choice at all. But anyway, I know that many of you are disappointed in not being here, but you can tap into the anointing of God exactly the way that this centurion did if you just believe. And notice the thing that made his faith so strong. He says, I don't need to see you come into my house. I don't have to see you lay hands on my servant. You speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And that amazed Jesus. Did you know the truth is, and I'm saying this in love, I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but the truth is that the Word isn't enough for most people. Most people, I know what the Bible says, but the doctor says, but my body says. And most people are more moved by the physical, natural things than they are by what the Word of God says, and that's the reason that they need help. And that they've got to have somebody else whose faith is strong to come and lay hands on them. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. If the Lord waited until every one of us was spiritual giants, and you were standing on the Word, and you could just take a Word from God, and that was enough. Uh, and if that's the only way that you could receive healing, I guarantee you most of the body of Christ would be dead. They have not been standing on the Word. You know, we are getting ready to start our next school year and we just had a meeting about this yesterday and we're discussing what we're doing and we're encouraging people to wear masks and we're encouraging social distancing. Personally, I don't believe I need any of that stuff because the Bible says no plague will come nigh my dwelling. I'm a germ graveyard. If a germ touches me, it's going to die. I don't get sick. I don't believe in getting sick. But... Not everybody's at that place. And they're coming to school so that they can get strong. And so what do we do? Just let them die a long way. So anyway, we're putting some of these things into place. Not for me personally, but because people are at different levels. And we have to meet them where they are. And so if the only way for a person to get healed was just to be so strong in the Word that God's Word says, By His stripes I am healed, that's enough for me. And they don't have anything else. That is, I believe, the best. That's this type of faith that made Jesus marvel. 
But God loves us so much that He's going to reach us wherever we are. Wherever we are. You'll hear Nikki, I'm not going to take her testimony away from her, but you'll hear Nikki say that, you know, God told her her healing would be progressive. And then when she heard me preach that it doesn't have to be progressive, she asked the Lord about it. And He said, that's because that's the way you were believing. And sad to say, some people have never thought that you could just stand on the Word of God alone. Most people have to have somebody come and physically touch them. We've had services right here in this room, in this auditorium, and I won't call names, but we've had people that have the gift of healing and the gift of miracles on their life. And we've had them here ministering. And you know what they do? They build an atmosphere of faith. They get everybody all excited. Man, we've seen some great miracles happen right here that would not have happened if the people would have just had to have stood on the Word of God alone. Matter of fact, last year at our Healing is Here conference, we had a man the very last night come up and bring his wife. We were in our auditorium over here. And he brought his wife and uh, was carrying her. And they were both elderly. i got to watch what I say because I are one. But anyway, I don't know how old he was. He was older than me, I think. And he was carrying his wife and and he couldn't hold her up. I came up behind him and put my arms under him and helped hold his wife up. And she couldn't have weighed more than 60 or 70 pounds at the most. She was just really in bad shape. And um, um, we had, uh, who was it? Todd White was ministering that night. And Todd asked what was wrong with her. And uh, he said, everything. And he says, what can't she do? And he says, she can't talk. And so he says, well, start saying something. And he prayed over her and she started saying a few words. And he said, what else couldn't she do? She couldn't raise her hand. She couldn't do anything. She, she was basically just invalid. And she started raising her hand. Within just a few moments, she got up and walked off. And did you know that they came to a performance that we gave of David and uh, somebody told me that they were here and so I got up and asked where they were and they were up in the balcony and she walked up in the balcony and and praise God, she was miraculously healed. What a great testimony. And did you know that that man and his wife had been at the Healing Is Here conference all week long and we had been emphasizing people just believing God and... They had heard all of the word, and yet if they hadn't have come up and have had somebody just minister to them specifically and impart faith unto them and release the anointing of God, that woman might not have been healed. So am I saying that that's inferior? No, it's not inferior, but you aren't always going to have somebody with an anointing on their life to be there for you. You can't always find a person like that, but you can always get to where you take the Word of God and just stand on what the Word of God says. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, especially during this Healing is Here conference when we aren't able to physically be here and laying hands on you. You are going to have to get hold of this truth that God's Word will heal you. Again, I go back to some of those same verses I've quoted at the beginning. Psalms 107.20 He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. And then Proverbs chapter 4, I believe it's around verse 20 or 22 It says, God's Word is health unto all of your flesh and life unto those that find them. God's Word will release healing into you. You don't have to have someone there. If someone is there, praise God, use it. But I'm saying God can touch you right where you are. And I want to encourage you that for the next few days, we are going to be putting out the Word through testimony. We're going to have teaching like this. We are going to be sharing truth with you, but you need to take some initiative. And like this centurion, you need to say, God, I don't have to be in Woodland Park, Colorado. I don't have to have somebody lay their hands on me. You speak the word only. You open up your heart and you say, God, give me a word. God, just speak some truth to me. And let these truths come alive on the inside of me. And I can guarantee you it will produce healing from whatever you need in your body. Let me contrast this and put it together with over here in John chapter 20. 
And this is after the resurrection of Jesus. He appeared unto his disciples on resurrection day. And um, Thomas wasn't present when he appeared to all of the rest of the disciples. And so they told Thomas about what they had done. And let me read this to you in John chapter 20 and in verse 25. It says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, unto Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Thomas said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Unless he could have some physical proof. Unless he could feel something. Unless he could see it. He said, I will not believe. Did you know unbelief is a choice? Most people don't think so. Most people think, no, I just naturally don't have faith. I just naturally operate in unbelief. No, we've been taught to operate in unbelief. And we have chosen to say that I cannot believe anything is real until I can see it, feel it, until a doctor verifies it or something like that. You know, I've prayed with thousands, tens of thousands of people, and I've had a lot of people that the power of God hits them, all of their pain leaves, or or all of the physical symptoms that they had leave, and I say, praise God, I believe you're healed. And I've had many people say, all right, I'll go to the doctor and I'll find out. And boy, I mean, the spirit of slap just wants to come all over me. Like, what's wrong with you? We just prayed a prayer. We did what the Word said. Your symptoms left, and yet you're going to go on until some physical person can verify it. You will not believe. It's a choice. He said, I will not believe unless I can see, unless I can touch, unless I can feel. Brothers and sisters, we've been taught unbelief. I know that many people don't recognize that because it's so pervasive. It seems like everybody is that way. We just think it's naturally that way, but it's not. You know, I remember one time when I was in Childress, Texas, and we had a full gospel businessmen's meeting, and uh, the full gospel businessmen's group labeled me a cult and told people to stay away from me. But uh, before I reached that status... They they asked me to lead the praise and worship. And so I was up there with my guitar and I was leading the praise and worship for this full gospel businessman's thing. And I had just started on radio. This was 1976. And I was just on radio. We had, we had uh, $5 given in two years of me being on a secular radio station in two letters. <laughs> That's all I got. But anyway, that was the beginning of my media ministry. And there was a woman there that her daughter had uh, just pulled boiling water off of a stove and it, and it caused third degree burns all over her. She was like five years old or something. And they had called in the day before, and that was one of the two calls that I got, and asked me to pray with them. So I prayed over the phone and believed that this little girl was healed. And they were at that full gospel business meeting and she had these uh, bandages all on her and the mother had to change the bandages. And when she took the bandages off the second day, the day that they came to the full gospel businessmen's meeting, uh, she took the bandages off to change them and her skin was normal. She was totally healed. It was miraculous. And this little girl was just dancing all over the front. And the mother came up. I prayed with her over the phone, so I didn't know who it was. And she came up and says, I'm the lady that called. This is my granddaughter who uh, had these burns. And she got up. And this little girl was just praising God and worshiping God. And, you know, that's the way that... We have to be taught this unbelief is the point I'm making. This little girl was just didn't have any inhibitions. She got up and praised God and talked about her healing. But I tell you, so many adults, you sit there and say, it's just so hard to believe. It's because of the way you've been taught. You are choosing to disbelieve. You can choose to believe. It's a choice. And if you've been baptized in unbelief, it may take you a little while. Before you get over it. But you can choose. And praise God. I believe that this Healing is Here conference is going to make a difference. If you will just receive the things that we're talking about. And start heading in that direction. You can turn it around. You can choose to believe. So anyway, Thomas says, unless I can see, unless I can feel, I will not believe. And in verse 26 it says, and after eight days again his disciples were within. 
and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Again, Jesus would be unjust to tell us not to be faithless if you couldn't do it. Some people are like, I just can't help it. You can help it. You can help it. You know, unbelief has to be fed. One of the things that happens when I pray with people, I, you know, Jesus, he would put out, when he went and raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he put out all of the scoffers, the people that mocked at him, and he separated them. And he only allowed three of his disciples to come in. You can see in the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha, when they raised people from the dead, they put out everybody else and they got just quiet and alone with the Lord. I'm telling you, the atmosphere that you live in affects you. And you need to make sure that you put yourself in a positive atmosphere. That's the reason that people that come to Karis Bible College, man, we just see lives transformed because they sit here under the Word four hours a day. They're around people that their conversation is all talking about the Lord. And it just makes a difference. You, you are influenced more by the people around you than what you realize. And so anyway, Jesus told him to put his finger into the print of the nails. He's, he was accommodating his unbelief and meeting him where he was. And he says, here's proof. Now touch me. Feel. And Thomas just fell down. Look at this. It says, Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. There isn't any mention that he actually put his finger into the print of the nails. But when he saw him, and also Jesus wasn't present when Thomas said, unless I can see, unless I can touch. And yet Jesus knew it exactly what he had said. So this was another confirmation to him. He knew that this was the resurrected Jesus. And he just fell down and said, my Lord and my God. And look at this in verse 29. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Now contrast this with this centurion. The centurion, he says, I've never seen such great faith in all of my life. Why? Because he didn't have to see anything. He didn't have to have Jesus come in. He didn't have to have him wave his hand over anything. He says, you speak the word only. Give me a word, a promise, and that's enough. My servant will be healed. In contrast to that, Thomas said, no, unless I can see, unless I can feel, unless something supernatural happens... I will not believe. Man, we don't want to be like Thomas. You know, he is typically called Doubting Thomas. What a terrible thing to be called 2,000 years later. And it's because of this instance right here. I believe that if the Lord was Terry 2,000 years, people would look back at our day today and think, man, those people were full of unbelief. We got so much unbelief. This whole virus thing that they're talking about, it's just based on fear. I'm not saying that there isn't a virus. I'm not saying that people don't struggle. I'm not saying that people haven't died. But I'm saying that, man, it is fear-based. And sad to say, it has played right into the unbelief and the fear of so many people. This is a hypochondriac's dream. To live in a world where everybody wears a mask and nobody shake hands and stuff like this. Praise God. But you know what? It's a choice. It's a choice for you to believe that, no, I'm going to get sick if anybody touches me. You could, be, you could believe what it says in Psalms chapter 91, that no plague will come nigh my dwelling. Only with my eyes will I see and reward, uh, uh, behold and see the reward of the wicked. You could believe that. But no, people just tend to believe the worst case scenario because it's more dominant, because more people are speaking that. But I'm telling you, the Word of God and this Healing is Here conference is telling you that God has already healed you by His stripes. It's a done deal. And all you have to do is just receive this Word only. And it will bring healing to your body. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. You do not have to have somebody else lay hands on you. If they're there, praise God. Use them. There is no bad way to receive healing. But I'm telling you, you can receive directly from God. God is with you wherever you are right now. 
I mean all of God's power. He can't come in just a little bit. There isn't just a tiny bit of God's power with you. God in all of His might and all of His power is with you wherever you are right now. And if you aren't experiencing that might and power, it's not because God isn't there and not because He's not willing to release it and give it. It's because of unbelief on our part. No condemnation about that. We've all been brought up in this, but I'm saying it is our fault. And we are going to be sharing the Word of God with you and teaching you how to reach out and receive. You know, it was back in about 1968, possibly 69, when the Lord used these verses to speak to me. I had been raised in the Baptist church. And the Baptists, praise God, they got you born again. I got born again when I was eight years old. And I praise God for the Baptist church because I'd have gone to heaven if I'd have died. So I'm not criticizing them, but they didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They didn't believe in healing. They didn't believe in a lot of things. They believed that all of these things passed away with the apostles. And so when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I started going around these people like Kenneth Hagin. And he would talk about having God speak to him in an audible voice. He would see visions. I remember him telling the story about, you know, the Lord talking to him and this little demon came in between him and the Lord and the demon was making noise and jumping up and down and he was trying to see around this demon and he, he was having trouble hearing what the Lord was saying and he thought, why didn't the Lord do something? And finally he just got mad and he says, Get out of here in Jesus' name. And boom, that demon was gone. And the Lord told him, he says, if you hadn't have done that, I couldn't. He says, I gave you power. You have to resist them. I heard a story like that and I thought, well, God, I want to see demons. I want to see God. I want to have an audible voice. And I started pressing in this area for having dreams and visions and God doing something special. And that's when I was studying the Word and God showed me this. And he says, did you know if that's where your faith is and if you keep pressing me, you can have some of those supernatural things. But he says, that's not the greatest. And then he took me to Matthew chapter 8 and showed me that centurion. And he says, the greatest faith is the faith that just takes the word and believes the word. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith. It's impossible to please God. The thing that pleases God more than anything else is faith. And I saw this, and I remember praying a prayer back, I don't know, 68, 69, and saying, God, if this is the way it is, then I want to please you. And I want to go, I want to take your word and believe your word more than anything else. Now again, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not against visions. I'm not against dreams. I'm not against audible voices and stuff. I've never heard an audible voice of God. I've never seen anything with my eyes. I've I've never seen into the spiritual realm. There's people that have come up to me many times and said that they see angels standing up here with me and things happening. I, I believe all of that, but I've never seen it. I'm not against it. I know other people do it. It's in the Bible. But I'm just saying, I made a decision. I said, God, I want your best. I want to please you. And I said, I don't want any of these extra biblical things. I want to get to a place where your word says it, and I believe it, and that's enough. And did you know, prior to that time, if I was in a meeting, they'd be prophesying to people, and I'd got all kinds of prophecies and Things that happened. And after that time, without me telling anybody what I did, you know, somebody would be prophesying, they'd be going down the road and they'd prophesy to every single person and skip me. And then they'd go to the next person. And you know, some people think, well, what's wrong with you? I think it was just the opposite. God was honoring that commitment that I made. And I was making a commitment to God, I want your word to be what dominates me. And I can truthfully tell you that any good thing that God has done in my life has come because I've put God's Word first. I haven't done it perfectly. I'm still learning. I'm still having to deal with my own uh, stuff. And it's not like you just ever arrive, but praise God, I've left. I've moved in that direction. And any good thing that's ever happened in my life came because of just taking God at His Word and honoring Him and not having to have a feeling 
not having to have some confirmation. Two dogs walked this way and a black cat walked that way and that's a confirmation to me. We have people all the time that say, God's told, telling me to come to school and so I'm just asking for confirmations and they're waiting and hoping that everything just works out. They believe that if God wants them to come to Bible college then their house will sell, they'll get a job, everything will just be perfect. And this is the way how some people discern God's will is if everything just falls in line and if everything works. That's not true. 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul had a vision, a man saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And so he woke up the next morning saying, assuredly, the Lord has called us to go to Macedonia. He saw it in a dream. He went over there, it wasn't 48 hours until he was beaten and his back raw and his feet and hands in the stocks. And if you were just going by circumstances, you'd think, I must have missed God. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul even said that a great and an effectual door is opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. Did you know, I don't think you should judge God's will by circumstances, but if you were going to use circumstances to judge God's will, probably if everything's going against you, that's probably a greater indication that you've followed God's will. Amen. I don't think that we ought to use circumstances, but I certainly don't believe that everything just falls in line. Man, I've had a lot of opposition along the way. and I just had to stand on what God has told me and not take no for an answer. Not no from God, but I mean, uh, he, he never says no to me. All the promises of God are yes, but when circumstances don't line up, I just do not let circumstances dictate to me what God has told me to do. This very building that we're in, this very campus, everything that we've got, I guarantee you none of this stuff happened just automatically or easy. There was times that we had to stand and believe. And so my point that I'm making this morning is that God's Word, just standing and believing God's Word, is the greatest thing that you can do to take the Word and just believe it. And yet for the average person... They don't, the word isn't enough for them. I remember going to a David Ingalls meeting one time. I don't know how many of you remember David Ingalls. But man, he was a powerful guy back in the 80s. And I went to one of his meetings in Turkey, Texas. There's a place called Turkey, Texas. And he was ministering and I was standing in line to talk to him. And um, anyway, a man in front of me he says, I need to be healed of cancer. Do you have a word for me? And so David Engel started reading to him. Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes you are healed. Matthew 8, 17, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy spoken by Isaiah the prophet, that he himself bore our infirmities and carried our sicknesses. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes we were healed. He quoted those four or five scriptures to him. And the man just looked at him and says, I know all of those scriptures. I was wondering if you had a word about healing from cancer. And David Engel didn't know what to say. He was just speechless. And, and I was sitting there thinking, what do you want? But see, there's probably people right here in this auditorium, or if you're watching live stream, there's some of you that say, well, I know every one of those scriptures. Isn't God's word enough? There's a difference between just mentally being able to quote it and knowing it. You know, when I first got hold of healing, I had never been real sickly in my life. I was relatively healthy when I was growing up. But when I got hold of healing and started believing for healing, I got sick for six months, I had a cold, a flu, something, every, every time. Satan comes immediately to steal away the Word. It's like when a little plant is planted. You can't just leave that thing out in a blizzard or you can't leave it through a drought. It, but once it becomes established, then it can withstand some of these elements. And when, when you are just receiving a truth, it's brand new to you, Satan will throw everything he's got planted at you for five years in the future at you all at one time trying to get you to back up because that's when you are your weakest. So anyway, I started believing for healing and I mean just sickness came at me. It wasn't anything major, uh, but just sickness of all kinds came at me. 
And finally, I just decided, I knew what the Word said, but it wasn't producing the desired results in my body. And so I remember having something like the flu. I don't know what it was. Didn't go to the doctor. But I was hurting so badly that I couldn't stand up. And I didn't want to lay down in bed and go to sleep. I wanted to fight this thing. I wanted to do something to activate the power that was in the Word. So I got on the floor. This is right after Jamie and I got married. And we had a hardwood floor. And I got on the floor on my hands and knees... I didn't lay down because I'd have fallen asleep. And I got on my hands and knees and put my Bible in front of me and I crawled around for eight hours during the night. I crawled around and pushed that Bible with my nose, quoting those scriptures. People wonder, you know, I just had this uh, senator from uh, Oklahoma. He heard me minister and he says, how do you memorize scripture? And I said, I never memorize scripture. I never do. And he was just shocked. And he says, you get up there and it just flows out of you. I told him what I do. I live it. And what I did, I got down and I put this Bible in front of me and I turned over and read Isaiah 53, 4 and Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. I read those and quoted them and stood there and fought the devil eight hours and in the morning that flu was gone. I was totally ill. And I've never had to say, now where was this scripture? Because I lived it. It became a part of me. And so there are some of you that say, well, I know these scriptures, but I'm looking for something more. You don't need anything more. You need to put faith in the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2, talking about the children of Israel coming out of the land of Egypt and they got stuck in the wilderness. They didn't enter into the promised land. And it says, the word preached unto them did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You've got to put faith in the word of God. The word of God is powerful, but it only releases that power once you put faith in it. And I tell you, it's, you have to fight the good fight of faith. Faith isn't something that comes without effort. It comes through studying the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word. But you have to do things to activate the Word. Did you know in the book of Revelation it says that the Lord will come back and there will be a sharp two-edged sword that comes out of His mouth and it will turn every direction and it says it will slay the people so that the blood will flow up to the horse's bridles. That means three and four feet high for a space of 20 miles. So many people are going to be killed. It will take seven years. They will appoint people that all they will do is go and every time they find a bone, somebody will put a flag there and people will go and collect the bones and bury them. And it will take seven years to bury all of the bones. He's going to destroy his enemies. And you know what that is? That sharp two-edged sword. I don't believe that there's a physical sword that's going to come out of his mouth. The Word of God is a sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says the word of God is quick, alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Ephesians chapter 6 when he's talking about the weapons of our warfare and the armor that we have. It says and take the word of God, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. The word of God is going to come out of his mouth. What I'm saying is the same word that we have written right here in the book of Revelation. Jesus is going to speak those words out of his mouth and it will destroy millions of his enemies with nothing but a word. The whole heavens and earth, everything was created by the word of God. These words that we have, this is the supernatural power of God. If you could unleash the power that's in these words, this is greater than any atomic bomb. It's greater than anything that man has ever come up with. There is more than enough power in the scripture that says, by his stripes we were healed. Past tense, already done. There's more than enough power in that to see you come out of your wheelchair. To see you healed of your heart problems. To see you healed of anything. Blindness, deafness, anything. There's more than enough power, but it's got to be released through faith. you got to mix the word with faith. And so even though we aren't able to gather and we aren't here together 
this week, you know what? I believe that God's Word is going to go forth in power. We are going to have people share things with you about how that they saw the healing power of God in their life. And, you know, I've talked to many, many of these people. Matter of fact, we're going to have Nikki Oshinsky. Well, she's now Nikki Weller. She got married, praise God. She used to be sick, but she got Weller is what she said. <laughs> and anyway, she's going to share with you. And, uh, and it'll be powerful as you hear these testimonies. But you know what? I've heard so many of them say that they saw that testimony and it taught them how to stand and just believe. And it inspired them. This is going to happen to you. As you hear these testimonies, you will get something from each one of these people as they share their testimony about how they were able to activate this faith and release the power that's in the Word of God. And the good news is you don't have to be here. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is right there with you wherever you are. He is there to meet your need. And all you got to do is receive. So, Father, I've shared these truths that you've shared with me. And I pray for all of these people. I pray for the people that are here in this room. But, Father, I pray for every person watching right now. If they're on the other side of the world, wherever they are, whatever the circumstances are, I stand on these verses that, Father, that centurion, you healed his servant just because he believed a word. He didn't have to see or feel anything else. You sent your word and healed them and delivered them from all of their destruction. Father, I send forth your word right now in the name of Jesus that by the stripes of Jesus, these people were healed. It's already been done. You've done your part. Now, Father, we reach out by faith and we take what you have already provided. We say it's voice activated. We'll be teaching more on this during the week. But the faith of God is voice activated. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. You have to speak to your mountain. So, Father, right now we speak that bodies are being healed. That people are coming out of wheelchairs right now. That pain is leading people. That, Father, there are tumors, uh, brain tumors that are being healed. And not only brain tumors, but people that have these uh, growths on their head, on the outside. Right now, healing in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to you. And Father, we release this power. I send forth your word right now to touch people wherever they are. You know, wherever you are, I want you to start responding right now. Don't just be sitting and listening to me. But you reach out and take this. You begin to start speaking healing over yourself. That same thing applies for people right here in this auditorium. But wherever you are, you stand right now. You reach out and take it. You begin to start speaking that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. And I'm going to stay healed. Father, we release this. We release this anointing. I believe that diabetes is being healed. All kinds of physical, internal things. It may not have an outward manifestation, but it affects your body. Father, we just release your healing. And we thank you for touching all of these people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You know, we are going to be praying with people all during this week. Uh, for those of you that are present here, we've got some prayer ministers that are here and you can come up and physically receive your healing. But I want to also encourage you that we've got a lot of people at the phones right now just to receive your call and to pray with you. And we've seen people raised from the dead through our phone ministry. We've actually had people call in for others who were dead and they pray with them and put the phone up to their ear and they get... They get raised from the dead. Man, we have some powerful people answering the phone. So again, remember that you can call in right now. And if God has already touched you, and if He's already healed you, just some of those few things that I mentioned, please call and let us know what happened. Again, I go back to that verse, Revelation 12. They overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You give testimony. To what God has done. Call in and let somebody know. And it will be an encouragement to us and all of the people here. We will share it with those who are watching. But also it will help you to be able to speak and stand on what God has said. But we believe that this is a week of healing 
And it's not limited by distance. I believe that God is setting people free all over the world. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. We give you praise and worship that you've already done it. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit is right there present with people and that you're helping them to receive. So, Father, we thank you for that. We agree and we receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. For more of Andrew's teaching and other resources, please visit our website at awmi.net. Or, for prayer and additional information, call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Again, that's 719-635-1111.
ากเกลียดที่นุ่มมากกว่าเอ็นเทมสัมผัสแล้วเอ็มดีขึ้นได้ไรลิชีช่างได้ไรอันกินนึกมาคนสุดคนสุดพี่สาวเอ็มดาวก็เว้นี่บ้าก็เหื่อหนึ่งก่อนจนยาวเว้นี่เมาหน่อยดาวมิงใจพี่สาวเอ็มดาวก็เว้นี่Anh chỉ muốn em cạnh đây thôi, không muốn em ở bên đời. Chỉ muốn em anh bên người. Người đã gỡ bữa đi xa trong cơn mưa chiều vội vã. Người đã bước quên anh khi cơn mưa qua gần vội vã. Em đã quên rồi mà anh sống ngày hôm qua về. Chẳng còn lại gì những người mà đỡ mà. Chưa ta chung con giữ nhau chẳng để giữ lấy em khi cơn mưa về đến và chẳng cần nhau khi anh với em cùng một đêm trôi em ơi ta còn gì nữa đâu một cơn mưa ngày hôm qua ta còn lại gì nữa đâu khi I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yo, I got a lot of shit to say, so I'ma do this every day. I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave. Six feet deep, wonder, but my body won't decay. 'Cause my messages are kinda so they put 'em on display. Oh yeah, I rap with a certainty. I have a sense of urgency, a message for eternity for everyone internally. I had some people burning me, but now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with. Now they looking nervously, and I don't really care what you think of me respectfully. You can kick rocks if you think you're fucking better. I will outwork you, turn you to an enemy. Hurt you so bad that you're gonna need some therapy. I got the motherfucking recipe. I've been cooking up hits. I'ma leave a legacy. You'll be looking small when you're standing right next to me. I'm five ten, bitch, but I'm ten feet next to you. I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. So you can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. 'Cause I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, I'ma do shit my way. You can go kick rocks. I'ma stack bricks up, build what I want to make. Yeah, I'ma do it all.